Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about another Bolo item here, something that I look for all the time. I was a regional manager and a general manager for many years of my life, almost 20, and we actually had to wear ties, so I have a large collection of tie tacks, tie clips, even cufflinks. So that's going to be the topic of the day. We're going to cut over there. We're going to show you the amount of money you can make on some of these items. This year, Anson is serving up the finest fashions in town with a great new line of fashion style jewelry for men. Designed by experts, fashion style Anson sets the pace in color, in design, and in quality. For instance, Anson's Black Stallion, a masculine black horsehead design against a background of high style pink. The complete set, links and tie clip, just $5. So here we are at men's, I guess you would say, jewelry. There's three basic areas that I look for, tie tack, tie clip and cuff link. Um, tie tack are all pretty much the same. I'm not going to go over and, and explain and show you every single aspect of all of this. It's just a generalized area here. There's some that show up a lot and there's some that don't. I don't usually find the big heavyweight gold ones. This is um, includes groupings because a lot of times a tie tack would be included in a set of cuff links. So there's many ways to find these. Let's just show you the, the basic example real quick of what a tie tack is. This is a tie tack. It usually has the chain. For those who don't wear one, don't know what it is, there's a, a backing to it. It has basically a big thick, like a pin or a nail back on it. And the other part is the bar that actually slides into your buttonhole and that actually holds it so your tie doesn't flap away from your shirt. So if you're working in foods industry, which I did, it kept your tie safe from being dunked into anything whenever you bent forward or anything. So the tie clip is basically the same thing. It clips from your tie to your shirt. So then your, your tie, again, isn't pulling away from your your shirt and getting in anything. And, and cufflinks obviously just close your cuffs together. Um, they're French cuffs and things along that line. I've got a nice set of them as well, too, that I've worn before. I've even given my kids one when they went to the ball for GROTC or something like that. Um, it's just something that's kind of gone out of fad, but there's a huge assortment of collectors for it. This one here is a brand new one. It's 14 karat gold. Semi-fancy, it has a diamond in it, $345. They've sold one, they have more to go. New, old, or indifferent, I don't care. You can even do RA on these items, believe it or not, if you find the right ones. So there's every designer company, Gucci, Armani, Tiffany, um, anyone that you could imagine, Chanel, all make men's tie tacks, cuff links, and uh, tie clips. So, you know, you can find them for anything. If you know your market, you know, sourcing, you can even RA these items. I promise you that's the case. Just as good as almost anything else because these are bought new or old. There's people that just want vintage ones and there's people that don't care. There's people that only want new ones from designer names to put on their fancy shirts. So, now cufflinks all over the place. You can see here, obviously, a watchmaker made this set $15,000. Again, don't expect to find anything of this top range here. I just want you to see even vintage ones like this one here is a 1971 Cartier. It's a $13,000 set. David Webb, it's another name you'll find. Now, David Webb shows up in cufflinks, sterling, gold, and just plain plated as well, too. So they run the gambit, but most David Webbs go for a ton of money. Sometimes it might just say Webb on it as well. There's a ton of different named brands that you'll see on these. Anson is a very popular one. Hickok is another one. Um, there's five or six other ones that you'll see constantly that aren't worth a ton of money unless you get a specific one. We're just going to show you just the, the amount of these that there are. There's thousands of these. Gold ones are not. Disney. Every character you could imagine they've made these for. I check every one that looks like it could be something in gold because so many times people will miss the markings on there. Sometimes they're hidden on the backs and the bars and things like that where you just wouldn't think to see or, or find a mark. So I, I find some that aren't even marked as well, too. I found platinum pairs of cufflinks in the past, too, just for a couple bucks even. And I do find sterling cufflinks quite often. A couple times a month, I'll walk up on a decent pair of sterling cufflinks. I've showed them in my hauls as well. So if you look back or even look in some of my what's sold on, on eBay videos, you'll see these. I don't talk a lot about these because I don't sell them every day, but I do sell them quite often. 
I'll sell 60 or 70 of these every year, just cufflinks, not counting tie techs or tie clips. That's a whole different market. Um, you know, so there's enough money there. It's not going to be able to supply you with a living, but you're going to make a couple thousand dollars if you get the right ones every single year if you look for them. Many people miss these. I can find them in big bulk. Even the junk ones I can sell in a lot back on eBay either way. So now let's just show you a few differences. Now, like, here's a bar attachment. There's also chains. These are early styles. Some of the earlier ones are literally just chained together. It reminds me of um, a chain shot or something along that line. And they're marked inconspicuously um, in some of the areas here. 750 is, is the marking you will see um, on some of these. So it doesn't have to say... Uh, 8 carat, 10 carat, or whatever the case may be. Just keep that in mind. It may not say 14 carat on something like this. So there's a lot of different marks, and I always check them out. I've got a jeweler that I go to here in town that I've been going to for years. He buys all my scrap gold, all my scrap silver. Um, we usually save up and get a bunch and send it off. So this is $246. It's from Australia, for those of you from Australia. Animals, uh, three-dimensional, um, realistic-wise looking, anything usually has potential to sell. That's all I'm going to say. Spend your time looking these up if you're curious on it. I see cufflinks constantly. Several times a week, I'll run into some cufflinks every single week. So I don't always buy them because they may not be good. The prices may be too high, whatever the case may be. I usually pay a dollar or two for a set of cufflinks regardless of what's on it. Obviously, if it's a gold set... I'll want to weigh it and see what the value is. I'll check scrap right then and there if I have to for my phone. That's another app that I keep on my phone. So FYI, always do that if you buy scrap gold and silver. I do all the time. I may not talk about it, but maybe I'll do a video here in, in the near future and show you what I get out of it. Um, I, I've got a couple ounces here right now of just gold scrap. So 270 on this one. They're new. These are a brand new set. So this is an RA item. They've sold seven of these out of five. And I talk about animal stuff selling in every category. Postcards, photos, uh, collectibles, Halloween, vintage, anything animal-wise sells for certain people that collect those kind of type of animals. A person who raises tropical fish would want this. All the fish ones sell, believe it or not. Here's the Braves. This is Boston Braves. This is a sterling set. This is something that someone might not have noticed that it was a sports team, believe it or not. People don't always pay attention. I, I'm telling you, that's why what I do works. I believe this one was marked. I've seen a similar uh, set on these here before, too, because they make them for most of the teams from back in the day. These type of things for teams go back into the 30s from what I've personally seen, and they all sell for hundreds of dollars. Everyone, even the newer ones, you can get 100 plus out of anything even from a new team right now. Nautical. Now, this is a, a George Jensen um, I've showed many items from, from this actual maker. Uh, usually they're marked like 800 or 850, something along that line. Sterling in that country could even be marked 830 because I've had plates marked George Jensen that were, were uh, 830 marked on them. And most people missed them because they thought that 830 was a, a plate mark because they were looking for 925. So this is pre-owned. He has two pairs of these. I buy this stuff in bulk. So, you know, I can still sometimes find wholesale deals on jewelry. I had deals before in the past where we were able to get wholesale jewelry, high-end stuff too, that was, was easier movers. Um, we moved. I don't have the connection anymore, so, you know, it's possible. You know, I just haven't sought it out around here, but anyway. Figaro again. This is a Tiffany 250. For leadership in quality, Anton offers the Silver Scroll. Perfect in every detail, the links and tie clip are tailored in sterling silver. Price? Ten dollars, but you can have the elegance of Anson for as little as three fifty in the Anson Constellation with links and clip designed for eye-catching appeal. Offer only two fifty. Anson's quaint pennyweight cuff links with striking motif and color contrast. See Anson's fashion style trays at your retail jewelry store. Anson, the brand of the well-dressed man. Here's another one. Here is some fish again, realistic abalone shell embedded in it, three fifty-five. Another designer name brand. New without tags. I, I'm telling you, you can get new ones of these. And many times they're still not even marked. I found platinum, as I said, a pair of platinum cufflink sets before. Native American imagery always sells. Southwestern, Northwestern. Anything out west seems to sell. 
Now this one they've marked all the markings. There's four markings that they would have normally put on one solid piece, but they've split them up between the two. Uh, the, when you run into something that says 970 or at 50, it's usually southwestern from what I've seen. I've had a ton of 950 marked uh, sterling or higher, and it's usually uh, southwestern or Mexican sterling. And you see the that little figure there with the three, the bell. That's usually a good sign in almost anything I see. So let's move on here. Masonic. Know the emblem. Know that emblem right there. That is a key emblem you should look for on anything. I find Masonic cufflinks quite often. I just showed you one last month that I got a real nice one. Got some good money out of it too. So Now the next one here is U.S. Navy. That same emblem there is actually on a hat badge, which I've had. And they're sterling as well too. So when you see emblems and things that are military, always check them out. The military made a lot of silver. There's actually gold items like this. This was probably made by an officer, um, you know, custom made. And you know, it would be something that they would do for a ball or something. Let's just move on through here. Now, here's just another advertising piece. Advertising pieces go very well. This is the Super B. So I'm going to tell you, if you don't know what the Super B is, you need to look it up because Hot Wheels and all kinds of other items of the Super B sell very well. Slot cars go for crazy mad money. I'm just telling you. Again, realistic items. This is Mack Truck. Now, this is a takeoff on it. I don't know if it's a legit piece or not. All this stuff sells. Now, you'll find similar designs of most of these, not just in gold, but in silver and in just plate, just cheapo versions of the exact same design. So always look at them very closely. Here's just a nice sterling set with a, a vintage chain. This is modernistic, I would say. It's marked Mexico on it as well. Typical what you'd see, these clunky, chunky ones from Mexico. Nice items either way. You can see the price, almost $300. Now, this is some more chain ones, and that's got a torpedo. Though You'll see it listed as torpedo. Sometimes I, I hear it called a football. Um, that's just the other end. That's just what slides through. That's dumbbell design on this one here. Gents, nine carat is usually what you would uh, say gold filled is of the right quality. So... You know, they're not always marked very well either. This is something you'd have to have tested on most of these earlier ones. 213 U.S. dollars. Advertising Fabric Castle. That's a maker of art supplies, believe it or not. Again, there's tons of different advertising ones. Golf. Golf is always popular. This is a designer one again. It has an actual pearl in it. Nice one. Nice example. Sports I always get. I always buy the golfing ones. The golfing ones always sell for me. Moon landing, again, historical events, anything like that will sell for you. Anything odd or interesting that's identifiable, not just some crazy design. Now, some of the crazy designs will sell as well, too, though. Now, the next one here is another vintage sterling. This is just another connection means. These are made just like buttons, shirt buttons from, say, late um, 18th century. Uh, 19th century bridal rosettes, which are on the sides of the horse bridle, actually look just like this as well and are made the same way. There's actually marble sulfide, I think they're called, marbles that are, again, made the same way with this image underneath glass like this. Typical example, these are early. These are a nice pair here. I would have jumped on these. I might have went up to 50 bucks on this pair here, believe it or not. So maybe even more. It just depends on what I could find on comps. But I knew I would be safe if I bought something like this for 50 bucks. Another nice one. You'll find mixed stones. Cat's eye is one of the more popular ones you will see in onyx, um, black onyx. It's just the typical stones that you would see in, in um, uh, male-style jewelry like this. So this is a, an exceptionally nice set here, honestly. Uh, rather interesting in my book. I like it. I would have probably worn something like this on you know, a formal evening or something. Uh, 315 advertising ones as well just like the service pins and um, like 20-year uh, employment pins that you get many companies gave out cufflinks for some of the the upper management here in the companies too so this is a perfect example a lot of those pins as well as this one have actual stones that are diamonds and emeralds in them so 165 now, with the terms tie clip, tie tack, and cufflink, you want to use each one of those separately, usually. Sometimes you'll run into cross ones that'll show many, uh, but overall, I try to look them up separately depending on what it is, so just keep that in mind. But there's a ton of them up here. They go for hundreds of dollars. Tie clips don't go as high as some of the other ones. I like tie clips. They're more newer style, not as fancy or not considered as fancy. They're more like a restaurant atmosphere, I guess you could say, which is where I wore them. I, I've got dozens of them, honestly. 
all kinds of ones. When I worked in, in some of the restaurant areas, I wore vintage ones to fit along with the atmosphere. We had a lot of vintage items on the wall. And again, just like the, the cufflinks and tie tacks, they did employ service pins. This is our 40 years working for Western Electric. So rather interesting piece, $129. Just a couple more advertising. Kaiser Aluminum. I get pieces from there. I've had identical items to this exact piece right here. Now here's another one. This is a different example. This is 30s or 40s. This is the style they had back then. And many times you'll see a chain with something hanging on it. And that would have hung over in front of the tie. I believe this is a carry back from the medals and the fraternal organizations that were around back in the turn of the century, the turn of the 19th and the 20th century. So I look for them all. Many times they'll be marked really on the actual loop you see the the oval shape up there you'll see it marked anywhere on these types sometimes you won't even see a mark so so i said take them in and have them tested ge another service award here employee service that's what i see that's what i would put on any of these type put the word employee in service service award or award or employee award any of that is safe on anything that you see with the logo on it and there's a ton that have logos on it just another example right here, Whitney Aircraft, Pratt & Whitney, that is. Gold, silver, uh, unplated. They all come in all those options there. It depends on how long the employee was there, if they're employee versions. I, I specifically look for resale, the employee style, the company ones like this. Here's a real nice example. I've had many Figaro ones. I love fishing, so I've got two or three that are rods and reels. I've got a fly fishing reel, uh, rod and reel that I used to wear too, and I've got tractors and things like that too. But I've got a couple guns and a rifle. Um, the Winchester is one of my favorites. So $51. Again, some of these are new, new without tags, so you can still find these brand new. So don't discard them, even if they're not silver or gold and they show up in new junk jewelry because tie tacks, tie clips, and cufflinks always sell for us. I always buy them. Uh, I'm very selective though. Again, just like any other category, 90% of the category isn't worth messing with other than selling it lots. It's that other five or 10% that's going to make your day. So here's a perfect example of guns and such for us. Smith and Wesson. I'm a Winchester person. I, I fired an 1876. I think it was Winchester. It was an old Indian style Buffalo hunter rifle that somebody had brought over. It wasn't mine, but it was still a really neat experience. When you have a gun like that, you, when a shell is, is uh, spent, you pick up the shells. Those are rim fires, the one that I fired, and you can repack them and load them back in again and then refire that same one many, many times over. The shell casings are hard to come by on some of those. I don't remember the, the exact um, size of the, the caliber on the, the, the Winchester, but it was a neat experience either way. It was the old, you know, cocking style and, and the whole works. So it was really interesting, but uh, enough on that. This is Smith & Wesson, um, obviously a pistol, revolver, really interesting. They sold two of these. These type of items, anything Smith & Wesson sells. So, you know, I don't care what it is. I've had cufflinks that were pistols, Colt pistols, um, anything like that for cufflink wise. And just another, this is sports related. So just another perfect example. Anything that's specific can be ID'd or, or tied to a group, an organization, an animal, figure, any of that stuff sells for us. So, well, there you go. There's some more items that I look for all the time. I sell 60 or 70 pairs of cufflinks alone every single year. So it's a pretty big chunk of change to add to the bottom line. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.